these creatures don't care about the laws of physics. Animals do not grasp physics unless they are hiding something from us. They have no notion that gravity caused them to fall from the top of a tree and splat. They just know that they are no longer alive. But that doesn't stop them from mastering the physical laws of the cosmos in ways that science is only just beginning to comprehend. In this video, we will look at one such species that defies physical principles. Today we will discuss climbing, but not in the way you might expect. Let us have a look at goat climbing. Yes, you read that correctly. Today we will look more closely at alpine ibex, the ultimate natural climbers. Their natural abilities allow them to go where the few others would. So let's get started with the video. The alpine ibex is a wild goat found in Europe's Alps. It has large curving backward horns. Female horns are shorter, subtler, and more curled, and serve as a form of self-defense against predators. Males are often larger and heavier than females. The male alpine ibex's chin beard is another distinguishing trait. These animals' coats are short and silky, with varying hues according to on the season. In the winter they have a reddish-brown coat, while in the summer they have a brownish-gray coat. Alpine ibex can currently be found in the majority or all of the alpine ranges of Italy and France, as well as in southern Germany. Switzerland and Austria. Their preferred habitat is the rocky zone above alpine forests along the snow line, where they inhabit steep, rugged terrain. Adult males in heavily populated regions may remain in large and mixed large spruce woods if no snow has fallen. Winter is spent by males in coniferous forests. Males and females spend the majority of the year in different environments. Females rely on steep terrain more than males. Males prefer lowland meadows in the spring, when snow melts and green grass emerges. During the summer, they ascend to alpine meadows. When winter hits, both genders migrate to steep, rocky slopes with little snow. They also seek cover in small caves and overhangs. Ibex are extremely agile animals. Without running, they can jump more than 6 feet or 1.8 meters straight up. This enables them to easily climb mountainous terrain. To assist them grip the slopes of steep, rocky cliffs, ibex hooves feature sharp edges and concave undersides that act like suction cups. The lowest section of each toe is made up of a hard external and soft inside part that allows ibexes to handhold in exceedingly tight surfaces. Even yet, not all ibex can scale the nearly steep walls. Ibex hooves are razor sharp. A hoof has concave undersides and provides dependable support, assisting the animal in maintaining balance while jumping from one steep cliff to another. This is what allows them to climb rocks. When we look at a horse's hoof, we can see that they only walk on the hard edge of their hooves. The section of the hoof that meets the ground forms the shape of a horseshoe. Consider a mountain lion's foot as well. It lacks a firm edge. It features soft pads that make contact with the ground. Our mountain climbing goat has both a hard edge and soft pads that contact the ground giving them the best of both worlds. But why do these goats climb so high? One motive must be to avoid predators. But that's not all. They have also been discovered scaling man-made dams, which is really cool. But why? The reason ibex climbs dams is simple. They are hunting for salt. The ibex's herbivorous diet is deficient in salt, particularly calcium salts. Farmers provide salt for practically all herbivore livestock, but in the wild, animals must locate salt for themselves. In the spring, when salt requirements are greatest, it's not uncommon to see ibex eating the ground in search of mineral salts released by rocks and they've even been seen licking the pavement, lured by antifreezing salts. Dam walls made of stones and concrete appear to be a valuable source of salts for these amazing animals that can eat anything. Despite the fact that nothing is known about the exact composition of the salt that attracts ibex to dam walls, researchers believe that it is a tringite. Ibex are among the few species that can benefit from this salt source. Ibex are exceptional climbers when compared to other ungulates having their cloven hooves properly adapted to steep slopes of dams. Male and female ibex live apart for the majority of the year. This of course changes during the breeding season, when the animals are in rut, which occurs every year around. December. Six weeks are required for breeding. Six weeks are required for breeding. Adult males use their horns to fight for females. Males' anger can take the shape of threats and displays. Scientists have discovered a linear dominance hierarchy among males which is determined by horn size and group cohesiveness. These power dynamics shape the courtship process, which includes complicated phases and events. A reminder that these creatures are social individuals with habits, preferences, and memories of previous interactions. The gestation period begins roughly 167 days after a male and female copulate. Twins make up about 20% of all births. 
These offspring, like those of other goat species, are referred to as kids until they reach adolescence. When not reproducing, the dangers divide into three distinct groups, adult male, herds, and their offspring, and groups of young individuals. Individuals reach maturity at 18 months, but continue to develop throughout time. Females often attain their full size between the ages of 5 and 6. Males, on the other hand, take a little longer, reaching full size between the ages of 9 and 11. These creatures can survive for up to 19 years in the wild. Bears, wolves, foxes, golden eagles, and mountain leopards are among their predators. To protect themselves from ground attacks, they employ their climbing and jumping talents as well as their power and speed to flee for their life. Real predators such as eagles have an advantage, however due to their size and weight, not all eagles can catch them. Smaller ones are usually vulnerable to their attacks. Humans though are without a doubt the greatest threat to these species. Despite the fact that it is no longer endangered, the alpine ibex once drew hunters because of its magnificent horns. There was also a widespread assumption that specific portions of its anatomy may be used for therapeutic purposes. People used to go for them for these reasons in order to benefit. Alpine ibexes are at home in their natural environment, with steep rocks and extreme weather conditions. Despite this, due to disease susceptibility and parasites, as well as the risk of their offspring being taken and eaten by lynx or golden eagles, alpine ibex began to seek bigger meadows, from snow lines to alpine woodlands. As a result, they get too close to human communities, occasionally interbreeding with domestic goats. Human intervention such as mountaineering and hiking is another significant hazard to alpine ibex. As is often the case with human population growth and technological advancement, humanity began to adversely disrupt the endemic terrain of these alpine goats as nearly and early as the 16th century. The population has steadily declined as a result of poaching, over-harvesting and increasing pressure. Extirpated in terms of total eradication, this term is used to describe an animal that has fully disappeared from a certain area but not from the entire globe. Obviously, extirpation leads to extinction. This is precisely what happened with alpine ibex. By the 18th century, these sharp-horned goats had vanished from Germany and Switzerland. By the 19th century, they had all been vanished from Austria and northeastern Italy. The situation deteriorated to the point where the Gran Paradiso and Vanois Massifs were the only surviving areas where alpine ibex climbed the snow line. There were only about 100 of them. In order to safeguard the species, this area located in the western Italian Alps and the Maurine Valley was turned into a park. At the time, Victor Emmanuel II, the first king of a unified Italy, designated it as a royal hunting reserve of Gran Paradiso. In 1922, it was designated as a national park. With these activities, the population grew from practically extinct to over 3,000. In several cases, the recuperating population migrated organically to neighboring locations. However, reintroduction is an important aspect of the success story. Today, there are around 30,000 alpine ibex. While they remain a mystery to us, their conservation status is substantially better. They traverse the Italian Alps rotting, fighting, and foraging. The IUCN classifies them as a species of least concern. This type of success story is a rare blessing in a society increasingly defined by the climate crisis. However, conservation and reintroduction activities are not one and done. While herd size is something to celebrate, as are repaired chains of reciprocity within ecosystems, these regenerated populations have relatively little genetic diversity. Because they arose from such a small number of individuals, the species has become inbred and highly susceptible to disease. This could become an issue in the future. Finally, the story of the alpine ibex is still unfolding. We see them in their native environment and feel obliged to safeguard them as well as the delicate systems in which they climb, graze, and chew. As we go about our daily lives, we should remember that these other sentient beings, organisms that contribute to healthy surroundings, are our neighbors and relatives. And while creatures like the alpine ibex may not now have the right to vote in our society, it is our responsibility to vote and act on their behalf. While good species play an essential role in the landscape's connective chain, they serve as a reminder that our species should work to repair the harm we have caused. So, what are your thoughts on this fascinating kind of goat that defies natural rules and continues to reach new heights?